The Compute Module 4, this tiny little thing, is a truly expandable Raspberry Pi able to be used in many ways. For example, there's a project called CM4AES which builds some super high fidelity audio outputs straight into the Raspberry Pi. Or take this board, the Mirko PC, which I just got in the mail from Poland. One guy, Mirek, saw the Compute Module 4 and decided he wanted to build a full mini PC with it. So he did. He designed this PCB and had it manufactured, then soldered all the components to make a full-fledged mini Pi PC with tons of neat features, including a built-in high-quality headphone amp. I'll talk more about this board in a future video, but what I wanted to highlight is this part right here in the middle of the board. It's the first time I've had a Pi board with a full-size M key slot, and it's really cool because now I can put in any standard NVMe SSD on the Pi. This storage is even faster than when you plug an NVMe drive into a standard Pi 4 using a USB 3.0 adapter because the storage connects straight to the Pi's PCI Express bus. Anyways, that's not what this video is about either. In this video, I wanted to test a feature that's so new it's still in beta, but soon it'll be available standard on Pi OS, and that's NVMe booting. What does it take to get the Pi to boot off an NVMe drive like this 500 gig WD Black SSD, and how much faster are tasks like booting and web browsing? To test that, I'm gonna install the WD Black SSD into the Mirko PC's M.2 slot, then I'll snap in a Compute Module 4 right where it belongs. I booted it up and made sure I could see the attached NVMe drive using LSBLK in the terminal. Now, in the future, the Compute Module should be able to boot from NVMe drives right away out of the box, maybe requiring a tweak to the boot order if you have a Compute Module with EMMC. But right now, since it's in beta, I have to do a few extra steps to get this to work. First, I shut down the Pi and connected it to my Mac in USB boot mode so I could update the Pi's bootloader. To do that, I used the USB boot utility on GitHub. I modified the boot order so the NVMe drive would be used before EMMC or SD cards, then ran the update -pi eep rom shell script in USB boot. Finally, I ran the rpi boot command with an extra argument, dash d nvme, which makes sure the nvme bootloader is in place. But like I said, all that stuff won't be necessary once this feature is out of beta. After that was done, I booted the Pi back up and used the built-in SD card copier utility to copy all the data from the eMMC storage to my WD Black SSD. Make sure to check new partition UUIDs here. This copy took some time, but once it was done, there was one more step to ensure the Pi would actually boot properly. I had to mount the NVMe drive and update the Raspberry Pi firmware to the latest version using rpi-update, specifying a root path and a boot path like you see on the screen so it would update the firmware on the NVMe drive. Once that was done, I shut down the Pi, then booted back up, and look! The root and boot partitions are both mounted from the NVMe drive. And you can also see the boot and root partitions on the internal eMMC storage were mounted automatically as if they were external microSD cards. At this point, I could reformat the eMMC storage if I wanted, or if I pulled out the SSD, the Pi would just revert back to booting off the eMMC. But I didn't want to do that. Instead, I wanted to benchmark this thing. My big question, how much faster is the Pi with an NVMe SSD? And I wanted to compare boot times and app launch times. First, I wanted to compare it to a number of different boot options, like the built-in eMMC storage, a fast microSD card, in my case a 64 gig SanDisk Extreme, and the exact same SSD, but in a USB 3.0 to NVMe adapter like you'd use on a Raspberry Pi 4. First of all, I should mention I made sure to disable Bluetooth by adding the disable-bt overlay to my boot config, and then I disabled HCI UART. I found the measured boot time was a lot longer on Pis without built-in Bluetooth if I didn't do that. With that sorted, here are the numbers. Boot up times are practically identical. I'm not too surprised though, the Linux boot process has been fine-tuned over the years and the things that take the longest are networking, device, and graphic system startup, none of which are affected by the boot volume speed. Next up, I wanted to test something I do once my Pi is booted, and actually quite a bit while using the Pi, open an app, do something in it, and then quit. I built a Node.js script to open Chromium, load my website, then quit Chromium. There's a link to a blog post with the script in it in the description if you're wondering, but you might wonder why I chose my website. Well, because it's a very light and fast website that gives consistent benchmark results, because I take privacy seriously and don't load any third-party scripts or trackers. 
If you have your own website, you should consider doing the same thing. And no, I'm not gonna segue into a sponsored segment for a VPN here. Educate yourself on privacy. Don't do what paid sponsors tell you to do. Anyways, back to the test. Here are the results. And here's where it gets more interesting. You can see that eMMC is actually a bit faster than the microSD card, and that's because the Compute Module 4 actually has some optimizations for eMMC that make it fairly fast, at least compared to even the fastest microSD cards. But the NVMe drive is faster still. It's 44% faster than the microSD card and 21% faster than eMMC. And just because I know someone's gonna ask about it in the comments, I also tested the exact same NVMe drive on the exact same Pi in an external USB 3.0 to NVMe adapter to see what kind of overhead loss you get if you use NVMe drives through an adapter on a regular Pi 4 Model B. And as a reminder, I ran all these tests three times and the numbers in each run were very close with less than 2% standard deviation. That's pretty good for a complex benchmark like this. And in this benchmark and many others, I've seen the same thing, about a 10% speed up by running the NVMe drive native instead of through USB 3.0. Now, these numbers are one thing, but would you really notice the difference using a Pi day to day? Yeah, you will. I guarantee it. And remember from my tofu board review, NVMe storage is actually more than 10 times faster when it comes to raw storage operations like file copies. And if you want a final reason why NVMe on the Pi is a good idea, the WD Black I'm using should last much longer with many more write cycles than all but the most expensive industrial micro SD cards, assuming you have a good power supply. And that brings me to the point of the Mirko PC's power input. You might have noticed a couple low voltage warnings when I was running the benchmarks earlier. A fast new SSD like this one can use up to 10 watts and couple that with the Pi itself consuming 10 watts at peak and you need at least 20 watts of power to be safe. The Mirko PC is designed with a five volt three amp power input and that can only provide 15 watts. In fact, my FIO benchmarks ran into errors a couple times so I reran them on the official IO board with a PCI to M.2 adapter card so I could provide 12 volts at five amps. That's over 60 watts of power. And this is why it's incredibly important to use a good power supply with a Raspberry Pi, no matter what kind of storage you use. It has to provide enough current and handle large spikes. A lot of people might not realize it, but power supplies are often the reason for micro SD card corruption. I've never had corruption on any of the Samsung or SanDisk micro SD cards I use, and I've been testing some of these cards since 2014. Why is that? because I make sure I use good power supplies with my Pis, and I try not to write tons and tons of data to them like noisy log files. Sorry for the rant. Bottom line, if you care about your data, use a good power supply, not the cheapest one you have laying in your drawer. So Pis can boot off NVMe SSDs. That's pretty cool. And yeah, a Pi is gonna bottleneck a fast SSD like the WD Black I have. It's advertised as going over three gigabytes per second of sequential read speed, but current generation Pis will only get about 400 megabytes per second max. But they're still super fast on the Pi. The random IO is way faster on one of these than any other option for Pi storage. And you can also get NVMe SSDs in way larger sizes with much better performance than micro SD cards. Plus they're much smaller than even 2.5 inch SATA drives. And that brings me to my current suggestion for the Pi Foundation. If there's any way a future Pi 5 could include four lanes of PCI Express throughput and I don't know, maybe an M.2 slot under the board, that would make one heck of a single board computer. Until then, I'll be using boards like the Mirko PC and the Compute Module 4 so I can get the fastest Pi performance possible for my particularly pertinent projects. Until next time, I'm Jeff Kierling. And my app just locked up, so I can't do anything right now. Because I take privacy, private, ah, privacy, 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 with tons of neat features, including a, a, oh man. Every time I add words, it doesn't make sense. Well, that's because it's a very light and fast website. Oh, somebody texted me. I really need to learn to turn off notifications when I'm recording.